Welcome to Kino Society. With Owen Shapiro. In today's episode, we have actress Monica Gossman, known for Iron Sky, Mank, and Maximum Impact. Welcome to Kino Society. Hi, thank you for having me. So what's made you want to get a career in the film industry? Wow, that's a good question. <laughs> what was it? It's not that I was looking for like a re- career in the film industry. I, I wanted to be in the arts and um, I started with dancing and then I continued moving into acting. And um, I think the most important um, subject that I had or, or goal was to have um, a voice um, in, in the arts. All right. So what's an average workday like for you? I wouldn't say that there is an average workday. <laughs> That's the thing about being an artist. You, um, you have to be very flexible with um, what's coming up for you. So sometimes um, it's, uh, since I'm also teaching, I'm a professor at the University of Florida um, and I teach acting. Sometimes it is a usual early morning um, teaching and then uh, writing on scripts or on, um, uh, on papers. And then you might have a casting and then um, you pick up your son from daycare. And, um, and sometimes the day starts with a shooting day and sometimes it starts at... Um, 6 p.m. with the shooting day overnight so there's not really a ever like a normal day like an everyday routine that you follow so that changes depending on um, if you work for theater for film if you're right now teaching or if you're um, constantly writing because you have a deadline to fill so my days are very different <laughs> What about your routine on set? Is there anything in terms of that? There might be a routine that I personally have for getting into characters. Um, That's one thing. And the other thing is normally you come on set, uh, the time is really depends on the director, depends on the location, depends on um, what time of the day is asked. And then normally you go right into uh, makeup and uh, costume sometimes you don't get the full costume not the full makeup and then you rehearse the scenes and then once you you know the scene uh, and approximately what's about to happen then you go into uh, completing the makeup completing the the costume and then you shoot and depending on how many scenes there are um, you rehearse again and depending on what director you have Sometimes it takes just a day to, to do one scene. Sometimes um, it, it takes some, a few days to do one scene. Sometimes you have eight scenes uh, during one day. So um, and then normally you can work longer than 12 hours and then you're done. Sometimes you're lucky and you're just there for, for a few hours, but mostly you're there the full day. Yeah. So that's a normal routine. And then you have one hour of lunch break and then um, that's pretty much it. Mm -hmm. What about your routine for getting into character? So uh, the preparation starts normally before you are on set in your house, in your home, wherever you are, uh, because you have to, to break down the character. You have to, when you're lucky, you have the chance to work with the director before you go on set. And uh, depending on how much time you have, you, 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 you go and prepare the character. I mean, I guess every ca- actor is different, but I, I need for sure a few weeks to just get into the character, to analyze, to feel it, to have it. Well, you analyze shorter, but to get it into your system takes a little while. So um, if, you, if you have the chance, then... It's actually good if you have two, three weeks at least to get into the characters, your body and your mind is completely absorbed by that. And, um, and then when, when I get on set, I just have a little 
my own routine that I won't share here. It's my private routine that I have to get um, into character. But I'm not one of the actors who is then, while I'm shooting something, the character. So I'm not going around being a certain character for weeks. Um, I, I go on set, I become character, and then on screen, and then I'm leaving the character. Um, because I, I find it very difficult to stay in character all the time. I know some actors do that. I honestly don't know how they do it because it's, it's so, um, yeah, it's so consuming, energy consuming and life consuming to be dedicating all of the time to one character. So I'm, I'm, I'm one of the actors who, who come on set and then, um, work on the, or, or become the character. I am the character. I mean, you have the the whole environment supporting you with being that character. But once I'm I'm done being on set, I, I am not in character, and also not during the the breaks in between. I'm only um, in character when 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 we work on the scene. Do you think your experience as a teacher maybe has helped you acting? Well, I, for sure. Um, teaching is also constant training that you're getting right while you teach you also train your acting muscles right and then you're also since you're working mostly with young people you kind of like um always experiencing a certain uh zeitgeist right so you're always kind of like up to date what's what's happening so for sure i think that while you teach you also learn that's for sure do you think that acting in the immensely um, the David Fincher film Mank gave you more opportunities in the business? It definitely opened door, doors for me to be acknowledged more than um, in the States for sure uh, than, than I would have had maybe. Yes, I think so. Because it's a question of trust, right? Um, because film uh, is a lot of money, right? So people who, who do movies, who put their mon- money into movies, they, they want an outcome. They cannot book someone and be like, oh, that didn't work out, right? <laughs> so they have to be sure that the product they're, they're buying is something, meaning the actor, is something that is going to support the film the product the end product so if you're new in the business you need that person who goes like oh i i I trust this person that this person is going to do it right so once you have that director who trusted you then the other ones are more likely to be like oh yeah we can or directors and also film productions and also streaming um companies or, or like um, uh, channels, they're more likely to book you because they know, oh, she or he, he they worked with this and this person and th- they work for this and that channel. That means we're working with a professional. So they don't have that question of, oh, is, she's gonna, is she going to be able to deliver? You know? So yeah, for sure. That's very important. So how much of acting do you think is talent and how much of it is hard work uh, maybe a bit of creativity i i really think that some people have a lot of talent but they are not willing to learn and some people have maybe less talent but they're hard workers and i think that the second option would then win so i think you need both for sure uh, but it's, it's a question of how much effort do I need to put into this, depending on how much talent I'm bringing in, right? So it's, 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 it's a difficult question to, to be answering, oh, you just need to work or, oh, you just need to have talent. I think it needs both. And, and some people have more talent and some people have less but depending on how much work you put in, you're going to get the results, even though maybe you have less talent, right? Because by the end of the day, 
um, it's it's also it's it's a job, right? It's it's something you can learn. So, which of your works are you most proud of, and maybe are there any that were particularly challenging to pull off? Well, in general, for now, I um, I think that I have more theater work that 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 brought me to certain limits. I would say, right, when you're on stage for two hours, performing in the foreign language. Um, and uh, so I think that for now in my career, these were the roles who, who really um, gave me that stamina to perform also on, on film, or um, not only on stage. So um, yeah, for, for film, I am pretty happy with the results in Mank because it was not a big role and that was the difficulty for her because she she was there in I think 12 scenes but she's a quiet role and uh to and and it's film so you need to be living in that environment like in theater but you're not shown all the time right so um so that was pretty difficult because you have to be there you your silent role and you hope that the camera will capture that so I'm very happy with the results that we got for Frida because it was an effort um, with Fincher together that we put into that to, to make something out of her where you still remember that character. You don't go like, oh, who was that? We don't remember her. Um, I think she still leaves with the little ap appearance and speech that she has. She still leaves a certain impression. So how was it to work with David Fincher? Oh, it was great. Overall, amazing. Because he, he is a full-on professional. He is a um, inspiring, very uh, loving person with lots of humor and um, just so much knowledge. And uh, he has this gut feeling for things. And that, that's, all, that, that's all I love about him. And uh, to be working with him is also very fulfilling because he pushes you to your limits. He can, he's one of the directors that can take over 60, 80 um, takes for one of the same shot. And that means you're constantly working. You're constantly repeating, repeating, and repeating, where you go like, wow, what, like, how else can I, how else? So you will never, never have the question like, oh, I could have, I could have done the scene this and that way. and never, I never did it because Fincher gives you the opportunity to do everything, right? He takes the time to, to really get you as deep as you can into that role by repetition. And besides that, he puts you in, in the best frame by knowing the technical side so well of film that you know you're going to look good. You, you can trust that director full on because he knows exactly how to set up the scene. He knows exactly how to, um, to set the frame, the lights, the camera. I mean, he controls all of it. And he, he knows it better than maybe the people who are doing the that department right and and the only thing he supports all of that the only thing you have to do then and is show up know your lines and be in character and he gives you the opportunity to 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 dive into that and really explore it so you're you're going to be completely tired <laughs> after working with him and and worked out and this is amazing because you're training your your actor's body your actor's muscles and, and you're very grateful for that. So you can get very addicted to, to Fincher, I would say, as an actor. <laughs> so you've also worked in theater, right? How different is that from working in acting? Because you mentioned also Mank felt a bit more like theater. Well, I mean, it's different because you have that repetition, right? You have rehearsals. In film, normally, you don't have have the, the, the privilege to rehearse because it's again a question of money 
And um, although we had table reads and rehearsals with Fincher, that's a big difference that, that normally doesn't exist. I mean, it's lovely when it happens, but normally you don't have that rehearsal time and table read time before the actual shooting day where you would rehearse. Um, so that repetition makes the big, big difference, right? And you will have that with Fincher. He gives you the time to repeat and, and rehearse it over and over again. Well, in theater, you do that for weeks before you open a show. Um, in, with Fincher, you would have the whole day to rehearse and repeat and repeat and repeat. Uh, but then we also had rehearsals before that. They were shorter than theater time, but uh, we still had them. And he likes to run the scene completely to not do pickups, right? Pickups means uh, you just pick up a few lines or just one line. He likes to run the whole scene so you get that atmosphere um, of really the ensemble working together and not just one person delivering lines, right? So yeah, so that's the big difference with uh, theater and, um, and film. Also in theater, you would run the whole play and film that will never happen. You go scene by scene, obviously. And the scenes are often shot not in the continuous order. Sometimes you start with the end, then you go middle, then you go uh, beginning, right? So you don't have this arc that you normally can build up in theater for a character for, from beginning, middle, end. You don't, you, you can never actually experience it once from the beginning till the end because film is never shut that way. At least not for me to experience it. Maybe there are projects that are shut that way, but I've never actually heard of that, to be honest. <laughs> So do you have any favorites, movies, directors, or actors? Of course I do have that. Um, well, funny enough, Fincher is one of my favorite. He's the favorite actor that I always had. I grew up um, my childhood, um, or more so my, my teenage um, time was filled with Fincher movies. And I continued watching uh, his movies. I really, really like his um way of shooting his uh, rhythm he I, I really enjoy what he does i um there are a couple of um actors like benicio del toro that i love now me watts and there are like a tons more but these are the ones that right now come into my um my head i obviously also am a big fan of uh, brett pitt i think he's an amazing actor um, who's able to transform uh, tremendous and Gary Oldman. So working with Gary Oldman was, was a big um, privilege and a big uh, honor, actually. Another director that, that I like a lot um, is uh, Scorsese, for example, and so many more. I like, I like also old movies movies uh, like a man and a woman I like all the french all the uh, old classical russian directors and movies really enjoy uh, italian cinematography like uh, also fellini and all the, the classical ones so um it's very difficult to to just pinpoint just one right or um just a few names so I think to be to be in this uh, profession, you have to be kind of hooked to film, to be doing it, right? To um, to love me personally, I love different genres, different styles, and eras of movie. They have their own reason to be here, to be acknowledged, and to still continue living. A good movie. You can see old movies from um, Eisenstein and, and still love them because they're, or Tarkovsky, because there was something, a bigger idea behind that that continues to live, even if these people are not existing anymore, like good drama, right? Or good plays or a good novel will continue to live or a good um, painting, right? That still speaks 
for something and stands for something. That's art to me. What would you say to someone who wants to enter the world of cinema? Don't do it. Or I don't know. <laughs> do it if you really, really want it, because it's going to be a, uh, a long way. Um, and if you do it, but never, never give up if you're in that field. Because it's full of um, competition. It's full of closed doors. It's full of doubt of self. Just continue doing it and never, never give up when you once you enter it because this is a roller co coaster of like ups and downs and you have to be ready for it regardless if you're an actor uh, director uh, cinematographer whatever you become do it only if it's your full-on passion so do you have any current projects yes i'm shooting right now in kazakhstan and in russia um, i'm working for a show called shaman and i'm the female um, lead there and I'm playing the evil shaman woman that uh, seduces the lead actor all the time or forces him to do um, certain things. That's for a Russian channel or, or TV um, channel and uh, what's coming up is the show Staircase for HBO which I'm going to be shooting in Atlanta in fall. Right now we're um, in doing table reads through Zoom, which is exciting because um, that doesn't happen often either to have table reads. And I'm very happy to, um, to be part of that project. Yeah. So these are the next two things. Or like right now I'm doing Shaman already and, and Staircase is coming up. So how can my listeners find and connect with you? Oh, I'm on social media. You can find me there or through my agent or my PR manager you can find me on my website there's multiple ways to find me <laughs> thank you so much for your time monica and that's that's all for today don't forget you can subscribe to kino society on itunes and spotify thank you Owen.